This is the story of a teenage girl's unhealthy obsession with her teacher and just how far she'll go to win him over. Also known as Dearly Devoted, this is 1998's Devil in the Flesh. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Meet Debbie Strand. She's just been rescued from a house fire. This fireman's like, is there anyone else in the house? And she's like, yeah, my mum and her boyfriend. But she doesn't seem too worried about that. That doesn't look good. At an unspecified time later, these detectives come by to look at the burned down house and they notice a knife in what was the living room. Meanwhile, Debbie is being driven by her caseworker to go and live with her grandmother. That sounds nice for her, doesn't it? Yes. Well, it isn't. Oh. Grandma is a religious nut who watches televangelists. How strange, you didn't sound Asian on the phone. What? Grandma seems nice. Debbie's lost all her clothes in the fire and the only things in her room are her mum's old clothes from the 70s. I was wondering if I could go shopping. Shopping? There's plenty of clothes in the closet. I can't wear those. You'll be grateful for the gifts God gave you. Yeah, it doesn't look like this arrangement's gonna work, does it? Not at all. And it gets worse. Grandma wakes Debbie up at a ridiculous time in the morning and tells her to start cleaning the attic. When you're finished here, I want you to start in the garage. When she gets to school, Debbie has some trouble with bullies. Oh look, it's Todd from Sweet Valley High. But who's this? It's Mr. Rinaldi, the creative writing teacher. He gets rid of Todd and helps Debbie open her locker. Yeah. This is Janie. She's the first girl Debbie's spoken to, so now they're best friends. Later by the basketball court, Mr. Rinaldi... Call me Peter. OK, Peter, wants to show these kids that academic work is better than sports. If you spend half as much time on your homework as... Blah, you blah, 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 I don't care. Homework's for pussies. Did you say one-on-one? -on -one? No, he said nothing of the sort. But anyway, it ends up with a game between Peter and this kid. While they're playing, Debbie identifies this girl, Megan, as competition for Peter's affections. It's Megan. Excuse me? Megan. Sorry, Megan. Peter wins despite having no skills whatsoever. So now this kid has to get an A in his class. Okay. After the game, Peter is picked up by his girlfriend, Marilyn, who Debbie immediately hates. Of course. As we know, Debbie needs some new clothes, so she and Janie go shopping. She doesn't have any money, so she steals stuff. Cut to the detectives from earlier. Because of the knife they found, they're asking the coroner to check if there were any evidence of stab wounds on Debbie's mum's body. He's like, I'll let you know. When Debbie gets home from shoplifting... Where have you been? It's only 8 o'clock. Don't you dare use that kind of tone with me. I lost track of time. Well, well, Debbie, these things happen. But if you want to remain in this house, you better learn to give me the respect I deserve. God damn it, you're hurting me. How dare you use that language in this house? I'm going to teach you a little discipline. Oh dear. The next morning on her way to school, Debbie takes off her old clothes to reveal her new hot stolen ones. Now, all the boys at school want her, including Todd. But she's not interested in boys. She wants a man, Peter. All right. <laughs> In his class, Megan's handing the workout and doesn't hand out Debbie's paper very nicely. So Debbie trips her up. What is bad? <laughs> hey! After class, Peter's like, I need a student to volunteer to help me with my garage sale on Saturday. Debbie and Megan both volunteer. Great! Two volunteers, very cool. I'll see you Saturday. See you. Okay. Right. On the way home from school... You little bitch. Don't show up on Saturday. When Debbie gets home, the detectives are there. They want to speak to her about the fire, but she's like, no, sorry, I don't want to discuss it. She'd rather sit and write about her obsession with Peter in her diary. That could backfire. Yes. Meanwhile, Peter's at home cooking for his girlfriend, Marilyn, and then they bang. After they finish, Marilyn's like, I'm really looking forward to our trip to the desert this weekend, Peter. And he's like, no, sorry, I have students coming over to help with the garage sale. And she's like, right, that's it. We need some time apart. The next morning, Todd sees Debbie changing her clothes behind this bush and grabs her top. So she shows him her tits. Okay. When she gets to school, she pushes Megan down the stairs so she won't be making it to the garage sale. The detectives have come to Debbie's old school to ask some questions about Mr. Roberts. He was a teacher there who was dating Debbie's mum and died with her in the house fire. Do you remember a student by the name of Debbie Strand? She had a nasty crush on Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts complained that she had been stalking him. Oh, the whole thing turned into quite a soap opera, especially when he got involved with Debbie's mother. Yes, of course. Now things are beginning to make sense. When Debbie gets home that day, Grandma's dog is destroying all her new clothes. Well, where did you get these? Answer me. I bought them. 
Don't you lie to me! Oh, dear. Debbie blames the dog for this, so later that night, she lures him into a trunk and kills him with bug spray. She's the very devil herself. Yes. It's Saturday now, and Debbie turns up at Peter's house wearing next to nothing. Oh, what a slut. As they're setting up, she makes sure she's always bending over so that he can see stuff. Although we don't see Peter running inside to knock one out, it's certainly implied. Janie's come by to say hi to Debbie. Boy, that's a cool tattoo. I wonder if that's going to be relevant later. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Back at home, Grandma can't find her dog, but she does find Debbie's diary. Ooh, that can't be good. Back at Peter's, his phone rings, and Debbie says she'll get it. It's locked. The spare key's under the pot. It was Marilyn leaving a message saying they need to talk, but Debbie deletes it. Then she goes up to his room and smells his clothes. What are you doing? Where's the bathroom? It's right there. Thanks. Peter then drops Debbie off at home. When Debbie gets up to her room... Where have you been? I was at church praying for my mother. Don't you lie to me, you blasphemous slut. You've been out carousing. I was out with a friend. Are all your friends deviant men twice your age? You're a whore just like your mother. Grandma's like, I've been reading your diary and I know what's been going on. I am calling the police and have you put in a reverse skull, bitch! Uh. Yes! Uh. Uh. One more time. Uh. So Grandma's dead and Debbie gets rid of all her god stuff. Cut to Peter's house. He's just got home and sees candles on the dinner table, so he assumes Marilyn has come back. He hears the shower on, so he decides to join her. You have no idea how glad I am to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Peter is furious. He's like, get dressed. We need to have a talk. Apparently you think there's more to our relationship than there is. I saw the way that you looked at me the other day. There is nothing going on here. The next day at school and Debbie hasn't turned up. She has, however, sent flowers to Peter. <laughs> Noticing that Debbie wasn't at school, Todd goes over to her house to see if she's okay. He's like, are we going to bang or not? And she's like, no, I'm seeing Mr. Rinaldi. He's like, okay, either we have sex or I'll tell the principal about this. She's like, fine, and takes him up to the attic. As soon as it starts, she has second thoughts, but Todd's not planning on stopping. What a cunt. So she knees him in the balls, stabs him with a ski pole, and buries him in the yard. But that exchange has left her with a bruise on her face. And when her caseworker comes to check on her the next day, Debbie tells her it was her grandma. I have to take you out of any abusive situation. But there's no way Debbie's leaving Peter. I just can't do that! <laughs> Especially considering she's arranged a date with him that evening by pretending to be Marilyn. Here you are, sir. Hello, Peter. No, no. Debbie has made friends with these two guys on the next table, and when Peter tries to get her to leave, they get aggressive. A fight breaks out, and Peter is arrested. Marilyn comes to bail him out, but when she drops him home, Debbie is waiting on his doorstep. Peter, thank God you're all right. I don't. I don't love you. This game stops now. The detectives have been told by the coroner that Debbie's mum and her boyfriend's throats were slit prior to the house fire. So they come to Debbie's school to speak to the principal. Peter comes to see the principal too, because he needs to speak to her about what's been going on. He tells the principal and the detectives what Debbie's been up to. And while he's in there, there's a call for him. It's Debbie Strand. She says it's an emergency. The next thing we see is Peter with the detectives round at Debbie's house. Let me go first. Why don't you... Oh dear, that hasn't worked out. So Peter goes in, but Debbie runs up to her room. He hears a gunshot, and when he breaks the door down, he sees Debbie has shot herself. But on the way home that night, something doesn't sit right. Wait, that's a cool tattoo. Oh God, no. Oh yes, the body in Debbie's room was Janie, and Peter thinks that Debbie's next target could be Marilyn, and it is. <laughs> Peter is home just in time to stop her from stabbing Marilyn. But when this policeman gets there, it looks like Peter has assaulted her. So Debbie slits the policeman's throat before holding the knife to Marilyn. This is ruining everything. Uh-huh. Peter tries to pretend he's in love with Debbie to get her to drop the knife, but it doesn't work. <laughs> So an ambulance comes to take Peter to the hospital, Debbie is arrested, and that's the end of the film. 
So until next time, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.